Hi, I'm Kathleen Reitz and welcome to my channel. It's been a few weeks since I've posted a long form video. Uh, I've been pretty busy with some other projects and finally got around to painting again, which felt really good. And um, I painted this painting, which is maybe a little different than some of what you've seen me do on this channel before. But uh, when I started painting again after a few years off, I was doing mostly abstract work. And because I love flowers, I started mixing my abstracts and my florals. And um, this was kind of the direction that I was headed in. Um, in the summer, I tend to paint a little bit more impressionistic sorts of florals. And then in the fall, my color palettes change and my mood changes and I get back into uh, more abstract type work. But this kind of mixes the two loves of uh, being abstracts and floral. And this painting actually took me a little bit longer than most of my work. And I've been wanting to post longer demos on YouTube. So what I decided to do was I filmed the entire demo for this painting. And then um, I decided to make a three part uh, video. So the first one will be posted this week and I'll post um, the second part of the demo and of course following up with the third part uh, and also talk about my process, like how do I design my paintings? Um, how do I give eye flow and balance to my paintings? So I'll go over that a little bit. I'm going to go over my color choices and how I chose the colors for this painting that I did. And um, yeah, so we're going to get into it. I'm going to start, like I said, with the first video and then uh, be sure to watch for the two follow-up videos that I'll be posting again sometime soon. If you've been following me for a while before I started my YouTube channel, uh, you would know that a lot of the work that I've done in the past um, has leaned more towards abstract work. And uh, this painting here is going to be a mix of abstract and floral. And whenever I want to really just let go and approach my canvas very freely, uh, I tend it back towards my abstract work. So here you can see I am applying the paint with, uh, with my hand and I have a glove on my hand to protect my skin from uh, any dangerous chemicals that are in the paint. And instead of using black, uh, this is a color here that I mixed myself and it's actually a very deep, almost a kind of a teal color. Um, and I do enjoy uh, mixing a lot of my own paints, which I use especially when I'm working abstractly. I always invite you to comment on my videos and I had a couple of people recently comment asking me if I could talk a little about composition. And I don't have any real hard and fast rules about composition, but I will be um, referring to it uh, throughout my videos uh, pertaining to this painting. So here I wanted to establish some of my darkest values right away. And I'm doing this demo in um, pretty much real time. I have sped up the video a little bit just uh, for the sake of time. But um, I did want to let you know I did not let that first layer of that deep, almost black color, I didn't let that dry before going in now with um, layers on top of it. I find that because I've been painting for so long now, I know how to control the paint and I know uh, what to expect. So for me, I don't find it necessary to really let the layers dry uh, before applying other layers on top. And part of that is just because I use a pretty light touch, um, whether I'm using a paintbrush or my hand. So one thing I want to point out is just how fun it is to make marks on a painting like this. Um, that's really the beauty 
of abstract painting is I can feel very free to express myself however I want to. So um, all those lines that you see in the paint, uh, I used my nail through the glove, of course, but I used my nail to scratch um, to scratch in some of those areas and make some beautiful marks. Now I'm going in with white and I like to mix my own whites. I do this because uh, I feel like titanium white is just too stark and cool. So I like to start with titanium white and add small amounts of other colors to the white. And I feel that this just adds a different level of sophistication to my color palette. And I think you'll be able to see what I mean as I work on this painting and layer the two different um, off-white colors together. I think you'll be able to see that the outcome really has a much more um, harmonious feel than if I was just to use a stark white such as titanium. I really enjoy using a lot of different kinds of tools when it comes to making abstract art. Um, the whole process is very creative. So as you can see so far, I have used my hands and I've used a catalyst silicone wedge. Um, now back to using my hands again. And one of the joys of using my hands in abstract art is it is such an expressive style of painting and I feel like um, being able to use my hands just creates such a pleasurable tactile experience for me. It really helps me feel like I am um, part of the painting. The process just feels so much more personal for me um, when I can use my hands and paint with my hands. I think that just stems from, you know, when you're a little kid and who didn't love finger painting and playing with clay and just getting involved in everything we did and making messes. And that's, I think, the most fun way to paint even now as an adult. So here I do want to mention a little bit about composition. And as I said, I don't have any hard and fast rules about composition. I know that there are, there's a lot of material you can find online about uh, creating composition, but I always feel that if I strictly try to apply all the rules, it takes out the fun of just being able to paint freely. So for me, uh, composition is really about creating eye flow. And that's the most important thing. Eye flow, uh, meaning that uh, I want to create shapes and values um, and colors that will draw the eye the viewer's eye all around the canvas. Um, I want to create negative shapes in order to give the viewer's eye a place to rest and contemplate um, the painting. And then I want my, you know, some of my other shapes and lines to then lead the viewer's eye to other places in the painting. So you can see already that if I were just to leave this painting the way it is, it's already a beautifully balanced abstract painting. But now I get to have some more fun with it because I'm going to now start adding smaller shapes and ultimately uh, bring floral elements into it. So, so far you've seen me use my gloved hand to paint with and also my catalyst wedge. And now I've grabbed this uh, paintbrush that has really long natural bristles on it. I'm not quite sure what it's made of. It might be boar's hair, but the bristles are really long. I think originally it was meant to be used as a brush for calligraphy. My aunt and uncle had traveled to Japan and they brought me back these paintbrushes years and years ago. And they, I always felt like they were just too nice to use. 
And it's unfortunate because I think that sometimes we feel that way about a lot of things. They're just too nice and we want to save them for a special occasion. But <laughs> making art is always a special occasion. And it turns out I just absolutely love these brushes. And now I'm switching from that brush to just kind of a, a cheap brush that's kind of battered. I am pretty hard on my brushes. But I like this brush too because uh, it has its own characteristics. Um, I can apply the paint to the canvas. It has actually really, really stiff bristles. So uh, I get a lot of texture in my brush, uh, my brush strokes. And here I have scooped out some of my pre-mixed white um, with a palette knife. And you can see that I scraped a little bit of that onto the canvas and now I'm just um, softening and spreading all of that paint with my catalyst wedge. As I apply this paint, you can see uh, the difference in the white paint. So I've got that lighter, warmer, creamier color now that I am putting over that kind of darker, mm, more muted white that I had made, more of an ecru color. So I would say if I could give these paint colors names, these whites, I would uh, say the warm, lighter one is cream and the darker one that's a little bit more of a neutral color, I would call that ecru. And now I'm using my favorite number 10 filbert brush and I am using a glazing liquid and I am now just blending that white uh, into my canvas just to soften things and get rid of some of the texture. I want to, some of the areas, if they get too much texture in them, they can be a little distracting. And I always find it more interesting to have some areas that are very blended and soft, and then some areas that uh, have a greater deal of texture and contrast in them. And as you can see, this also helps to create a sense of depth in my painting. So I've already brought in some pinks and kind of a peachy salmon color and yellow into this painting. And that's already starting to make the painting feel a little bit more floral. And now I'm adding this gorgeous warm lime green color. It's kind of a nice bright green color. And this begins to represent the lush greenery in my painting. And now I'm switching to another tool, which is a small silicone shaper. And this is nice for creating harder edged lines than my paintbrushes. So here I've got that really deep, dark, almost black color, that dark teal color. Uh, and I've mixed that with a little bit of um, that beautiful warm green. And I'm adding more depth now to my greenery. And using my shaper tool in order to get some interesting marks. And as you can see, I am constantly working all around my canvas uh, so that I don't stay stuck in one area for too long. So I am always assessing the entire canvas as I'm working and uh, moving fairly quickly around the entire canvas so that I always have a sense of balance in my painting. 
This concludes the first video in this three-part series on me painting this abstract floral painting. Um, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to be notified when video number two is posted and then of course following up with the third video. Uh, also, leave me a question or a comment in the comment box. I love reading your comments and answering your questions. And also, if you have any ideas, anything you would like to see for future videos, I always appreciate getting your feedback and what you would like to see on this channel. So thanks again for watching and uh, be sure to watch for that next video and I will be seeing you soon.